Hey, you just found the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. All right, uh, today we've got a great giveaway for you. If you win the contest, you get a box of Magic Spoon cereal straight to your door. Great macros, no sugar, high in protein, whey protein, and this is delicious. It's cocoa flavor. It's good stuff. All right, here's how you get this box of Magic Spoon. In today's episode, uh, we have some fun conversations. We talk a lot about good stuff. So what I want you to do in the comments is I want to hear you talk about uh, what you think Donald Trump's new social media company is going to be like, because we talk about that in the intro. Do you think it's going to succeed, fail? Uh, who's going to be on there? Is it a good idea? Give us your comments in the comments. In the first 24 hours, we drop this podcast, okay? If it's in the first 24 hours, we go through the comments. If we pick yours, you win that box of Magic Spoon, okay? One more thing. Turn on your notifications. Subscribe to this channel. So you know when we post these episodes and you can win free stuff because we give away free stuff all of the time. Last thing before we start the podcast, we are running a sale on two workout programs and a workout program bundle. The first program on sale is Maps Hit. The second program on sale is Maps Split. And the workout bundle on sale is the Bikini Bundle. All of them 50% off. In order to get the discount, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code Spring Break. All right, enjoy the podcast. I see both sides to the the argument, right? Yeah. So, I, and my buddy, it was this is what I like. I really enjoy my best friend who I I talk about. That's a you know he he doesn't think he's liberal, but he's very liberal mm. for sure, right? He's a principal at a high school, and and like a lot of his political views lean that way, which I enjoy because we're best friends, and so we we argue it out all the time. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's certain things that you know he brings to light that I was unaware of from his perspective. And I go like, okay, I get that a little bit. Right. So we, we are making the case about, you know, the weight room being like, it's market driven, right? Oh, yeah. you mean the, the women's basketball versus the men's? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we made that case the, the other day and um, it's gone viral and it's ca causing all kinds of stink and everything like that. In fact, by the way, uh, NCAA responded right away and they set up the girls weight room, which by the way is a market response. Right, because they were about to they suffer. It, yeah. They were about to suffer the consequences of people who thought this was so bad and so unfair. Yes. So that's that is a market response, like protesting in front of a business or putting bad reviews. Right. Is a market response. And it's I'm like totally, buying stuff. I'm totally, totally for all that. And then my buddy brought up other points because we were talking about it being, you know, a market response, and you know, the men's basketball team that produces seven hundred million dollars a year at the tournament, and mm -hmm. then the women's tournament actually loses money, and they the most women's programs in basketball lose money. Or blah blah blah. Well, he's like, it doesn't matter. None of these athletes get paid. They're not getting paid for for that. It'd be different if we're talking about free markets where you know the the men are actually getting money for making that. Mm -hmm. And well, well, the school does, and, yeah. it's, and that's it's, always been a debate. Should we allow them to right. make money? Yeah, but and then so back to what my argument was with you a little bit was that Title IX does cover that, and that's why it that's why it is unfair is because Title IX basically says that. The school gets this allotted money, and they have to evenly distribute it, regardless of which side, whether the men or the women are. Now right. that's uh, federal money that you're talking about. Yes, right. But the money that the universities get isn't just the federal money. Right. Correct. They get lots of money yeah. from merchandise and people paying well, that, to watch the game. That's games. what makes this kind of murky, though, right? It is, is because they're they're not only are they taking money on. But then they're also making yeah. money on, on one side. You know, side. here's the thing. I actually just got in a, d a debate with uh, with Connor. You guys know Connor with his uh, his podcast. And I love ha talking to him about this kind of stuff because we can, you know, we're usually on on different sides and we'll have these great discussions. And I try. I tell him, I'm like, look, you know, uh, markets are what they are. And look, standing on the outside and looking at them and saying that's unfair, is not a, it's not an accurate way to judge it. I'll give you an example. Okay, I could argue very very strongly. That, uh, that teachers are more valuable than Beyonce. Very, I could make that argument. Hey, a teacher is teaching kids. They're responsible for raising our youth. And I've had good teachers in the past that had a tremendous impacts on me, right? I don't think anybody would argue a that. A teacher mm. will never make more than Beyonce. Beyonce makes tremendous amounts of money. Now, why is that? And it seems unfair, right? It seems like it's, well, well, how's that fair? A teacher is so much more valuable. It's because... There's a strong demand for what Beyonce does, and there's only one Beyonce. There's only there are very few people that can do that. Now with teachers, there's definitely demand, but there's also a huge supply of people willing to be teachers. Mm. So the cost or the value of that service is far lower. Yeah. So people like Beyonce or professional athletes are going to make more money 
than you know teachers or social service workers or even doctors. There's surgeons who save lives all the time. Don't make as much money as you know uh, Tom Brady does, right? Right. So this is just the way it is, and the the way you need to look at it is you need to look at it like a mirror. This isn't the. This is the responsibility of us. If we think it's a problem, mm -hmm. it's our spending habits. Well, that's that when you come. That, that's when you come from a very free market point of that's view. That's just though. human behavior. Yeah, but I mean, that's the, you gotta understand. And this is like my buddy. Like my buddy leans with like a lot of these socialist ideas. Right. That the government should come in and even this out. You know, if it was up to them, they they would want. You know, teachers get paid more. Let's take some more money from Beyonce and let's move it over to the teachers so they make more money. Well, see, the problem with that is, and I can see you can argue specifics and you can you can make some pretty you know some what sound to be uh, compelling arguments. The problem is, is we're blaming a system on human behavior. So human, and this is why income uh, inequality exists, and this is why income inequality will always grow. Is because, uh, and that means the gap, right? The, the the poor versus the the rich, or the middle class versus the rich. The reason why that'll always exist is because we're value driven. So humans always we, we we make decisions based off of value. Every decision you make is based off. Of, the reason why you work where you work is because it's the best option that you had available versus other options. The reason why I wore this shirt today is because I chose it over other shirts and so on. So everything's value based. And if there's people that provide tremendous value, by the way, judging what people consider valuable, it's a losing game. Right. Uh, the top websites on the internet are pornography. So I can make an argument that they're not valuable at all. Well, I mean, obviously to people, they are valuable. Right. Does that mean that it's 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 you know good for them or whatever? No, but it's what people value. So they're the ones that are making this decision. So people value things. And when people can provide something that a lot of people value, People give them their money. So mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos, for example, is a tremendously wealthy, but he's tremendously wealthy because Amazon provides a lot of people a lot of value. We're the ones that voluntarily gave him this money and did this stuff. And then as far as wealth is concerned, it's not a zero-sum game, meaning if I have more, that means that there's less going around. That only happens when I steal, right? So like back in the day when, when we would plunder, yeah, that made sense. Like there was only so much gold and I come and my army would defeat yours and I take your stuff. You're poor, now I'm rich. In, uh, in markets, uh, wealth grows because uh, things become more efficient. We start to innovate. But here's what happens. The more specialized you are and the more value you provide, the more you're going to make versus someone who's less specialized and less valued. Now, now this also means that the person providing all this value and innovation lifts everybody up. So, so what, what that means is that today, if you were lower middle class, you have way more wealth than someone 50 years ago who was lower middle class. Um, here, there's, there's, here's some other facts. This is just the bottom line. When, you're, when you invest your money, if, if you invest $100,000 and I invest $10,000 right, right. in the same investment and they both grow 10%, we both made 10%, but you made 10 grand, I made one grand. So now your wealth in total dollars grew much more than mine did, even though they both grew at 10%. So right. we're looking at this and we're saying, we're judging things, but it, you know, I tell you what, find me a system that, you, you want to be in a system where, where there's a smaller gap, but everybody's more poor and there's way less innovation. You know, you can go to North Korea and now, by the way, the gap there is massive if you look at the ruling class, right? like the leaders and the people who barely have enough food. But if you cut out the leaders, yeah, they're much more equal. They're, every, everybody's much closer together. But everybody's equally poor, mm -hmm. you know? Well, with this thing, I found a couple things really ironic, right? So Sunday, and I totally set my buddy up because I knew this was what was going to happen. So he's like, we're fighting back and forth and over this. This was like Friday, Saturday's conversation. Well, Sunday rolls around. And in my house, you know, I have my, you know, Katrina is a division one basketball player. So we watch women's basketball in my house. And so I sent a text message to my buddy that was advocating for, you know, the women's weight room and everything like that. And I said, hey, what oh, here's my actions. No, I said, what, I said, what are you doing right now? And he was like playing with his daughter. And I think they were watching like some Disney movie or something like that. I said, that's funny. I said, the guy who wants, who wants to advocate for women being equal with their weight room and getting just as much funding as the guys, one of the best ways that you could do that is to support them by watching them totally, or yeah. buying their jerseys. I was like, it's so funny to me, the people that well, are, that are getting all fired up about this. I'm like, they've probably never given people, a single yeah, dollar. They just 
need to be reminded of that. Yeah. You know, like it's it's one thing to say something, but really it's the actions that move people in a direction for change. Yeah, and it sucks because uh, it means you have to take responsibility. Yeah, you actually have to do something about which it. Which nobody nobody wants to do. It's yeah, like that's driving- my problem with a lot of these causes out there. It, dude, it's like driving around and complaining that- It's like complaining about, um, you know, crime or whatever. And, oh, there's always crime. There's always yeah. crime. There's always crime. And yet you don't do anything about it. You don't try to advocate for police. You don't try to, you know, set up things yourself. Yeah. You know, it's like the kid that lives at home that complains about not getting dinner. Yeah. And you're like, go make some food. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's funny. I've been I've been sitting in on these Zoom calls and I haven't found a Beyonce yet. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Looking. You know, the second most ironic thing about this debate, and this will be the last thing, that, and we'll drop this conversation, but I just, I think it's going viral right now. Everybody's talking and fighting about it. And I was, you know, my buddies, there's there's three of us, right, that were going back and forth. And then finally, one of my buddies posed the best question of all. He says, what Division One coach is letting their players lift weights between games? <laughs> and I go, I started laughing. I go, exactly, right. dude. I'm all, all this is like smoke and mirrors because... I don't know. I don't know a single coach that would let a, their athlete go do squats or deadlifts between a tournament. I mean, yeah. you all your all your weight training and and like hardcore training is in preparation mm -hmm. of the big dance of the big game like that. You're not. You might be doing some rehab shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. Exactly. If you rehab or just like trying to you know maintain your stamina or something. But yeah, not not mid season or like especially like when you're in a competitive championship. You're uh, in a tournament. Tournament. Yeah, yeah. you're playing basketball yeah, every you're not working out. every other day. Yeah. You, I mean, you are your rest recovery on day days off. You're an ice baths you're right. doing infrared you're getting massages that's what they need you're doing mobility you're doing you're stretching you know what i'm saying you're, you're not, not pounding the weight yeah you're not in there squatting and deadlifting dude come on so yeah. this whole thing is hilarious to me because it's like who the fuck is even doing that like yeah. i think it just happened to be that they had access to that at that at this because at, they're in different facilities completely yeah. so one facility probably had this big old weight room area and the other one didn't and so it turned into this huge well it's just a picture that shows such a you know discrepancy between the two and i think that's yeah. why it went so viral yeah i think yeah. it's because we equate the effort that people put into things with uh value so we say they work just as hard and they right. do they're training their asses off and they do. Yep. And and why aren't they doing why aren't they making it's because we don't value their basketball as much. That's it. That's the bottom. You know what they you know here it's equivalent to this. What if they sh what if instead of showing the weight room, they showed the crowd? This is not fair. Look at the massive crowd for the men's basketball game right. and look at this tiny crowd for the women. But they wouldn't do that, right? Because that then is on us. Right, right. It looks like now. And of course, that point's moot right now. Everybody's going, hey, there's no crowds anywhere, of course. You know? yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, but I mean, on, the audience on, on yeah, TV. On a, well, on a normal, right? So, yeah. yeah, your point is valid. But yeah. I mean, right now, there's no crowds. But. Yeah. Do you guys remember when you pieced that together with, uh, with training in season that you should not hammer yourself with weights in season? Well, it came around. So when we yeah. were kids, we knew nothing, right? So when they just I beat you up all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you were a kid, we were doing everything wrong. That's why I think I asked Justin when we first brought this up, like what his coaches were, what level they were at, because he obviously went a lot further in sports. <clears throat> but I feel like now, I mean, the, the amount of information that is out there, like once you're at the beyond the high school level, you, you they have, know. Oh yeah, yeah it, it, it's it's completely like a different. Uh, every time you go up a level, like so, from high school to then college to then you know, if you're in a bigger division, Division One, and then you go into like you know minors or pros, like you're going to get a, a completely different type of coach, hopefully. Uh, but I, I definitely like we would start backing off of even a lot of the intensity like midweek uh, leading into competition because. Because it's just like, let's stay healthy, let's stay fresh, let's just, you know, go over our skills and, you know, but in high school, we're just bashing each other's brains out until yeah. like <laughs> game day, you yeah. know, it's like, what are we doing? Like and people showing up half injured. No, you know? gains come uh, off season. And then during the season, your goal is to keep yourself not, from getting hurt. And not to mention that, especially a sport, like a finesse sport, like oh. basketball, you do not, what's wrong, Mozzie? Who just yeah, got here? Yeah. He's, he's Get a, his ass. He doesn't man. like your argument. You can kick yeah. him out, yeah. Doug, if he's he bothering you. Yeah. Uh, dude, you, you think of basketball as a finesse sport so that you can't you can't have tight shoulders right. you know what I'm saying you can't be sore in your legs like you, yeah. you need to be completely fresh when you're playing a game or else this that slightest bit of being tight joint health is at the utmost concern yeah dude yeah. so i don't know i thought it was pretty funny that is that yeah. is pretty hilarious i remember piecing that together as an early trainer uh i had a, a gentleman that i trained that was uh he was a, a coach 
And um, he was the one that told me that. He goes, he goes, you ever train young athletes? At this point, I was a new trainer. So I'm like, no, no, I haven't. And he goes, here's one thing to keep in mind. Always make sure that if you're going to train them to get stronger and train them hard, that it's off season. When they're in season, just keep them from getting hurt. And I was like, mind blown. Because as a new trainer and not having tons of experience with lots of organized sports, I remember I was young, I was 18 years old. I thought if I train a young athlete, yeah, I'm going to make them, you know, crush all the time. Right, like, right. Don't do that. You'll get them hurt <clears throat> right, right. if oh, you yeah. end up doing that. Hey, have you guys seen um, the uh, it's a series on Netflix called Formula One? No. Yeah, actually, I watched a few episodes. Okay, so I just uh, so I just started watching it. Right, it's, I guess it's on season three. I, I didn't see it pop in my my queue until recently. And so Katrina and I started watching it. Now, I, I have to preface this with, like, I do not know hardly anything about Formula One. So for those that are, like, big fans, if I if I mess up on, on some facts here. Yeah, it's not as big here in the States. It's right. definitely it's huge. Yeah, huge, Europe, yeah, huge. Huge worldwide. Huge worldwide. Right, right. So here's something. Okay, now, I remember in the 90s, okay, now I have a, a very vivid memory of, like, the Mario Andretti uh -huh. and the, like, uh, the Marlboro the car. The Marlboro car, yeah. Right, okay. So do you know that that doesn't exist anymore? Are you familiar with this? No. Okay, so in 2005, Europe put out, like, a, a law that you cannot – advertise cigarettes. cigarettes anymore anything mm. like you can't tv radio and because oh, because of because so oh, cigarettes in particular right oh, yeah. cigarettes yeah. in particular and by the way marlboro was partnered with ferrari they had like the most oh, yeah. dominant run they still are the most dominant run ever in like formula i think in formula one again correct me if i'm wrong but i know that they're one of the most dominant forces in formula one mm -hmm. so we're watching this series my, this happened, mind you, I did my research to find out that this happened in 05. I don't know this. And we're watching, and I'm, I'm like, you know, Katrina and I are watching together. So I'm trying to explain to her a little bit about what I know. Like, oh, the points kind of do this, mm -hmm. and there's two guys per team. And, and I'm watching, I'm like, where's the Marlboro car at? And she's like, what? What are you talking about? I'm like, well, I mean, Ferrari and Marlboro have always been paired together forever. And so this sends me down the, the nerdy rabbit hole to like figure this out. And I find out that. Marble's been pulled since 2005. And so I'm like, oh, wow, that sucks. But then I find out that Marble still is giving a ton of money towards the race program. Mm. So what they did, and this happened, I think, in 06 or 07 the first time, and this was fucking brilliant. Okay, Google this, Doug. Check out a uh, Marble uh, paint job on for a controversial paint job. So Marble has Ferrari paint the car. And from a bird's eye view, it looks like a pack of cigarettes. Oh, wow. So they got around the regulation? <laughs> yes. Wow. wow. That is brilliant. That it's is brilliant. smart. It's so brilliant. They were pissed, too, by the way. Like, they were they threw, they threw were up in arms about it because- The and, smoke that comes out of the exhaust is tobacco. I mean, you know, it had the, <laughs> mm, so, good. so it looks like uh, there's lines, like when you look, and it looks like a barcode. So it literally looks like a pack of Marlboro cigarettes wow. from like a bird's eye view and then driving around the track. So the, the concept was, okay, we'll, we'll send a subliminal message. That to, is brilliant. Hilarious. I know. Yeah. Do you know how much money, did they talk Bro, about how much money- oh, goes into stupid you know how oh, much it's ridiculous you, they're like fighter jets yo yes guess take a guess at like what like an average so and there's a big discrepancy by the way of like a small team that's coming yeah. up versus like a did you see like all the for, engineers and everybody they have involved in do, these cars you know, you know what a car costs for to build one of those no five a hundred to five hundred million wow oh, yeah and you know that you know that they pass regulations to because they get so good with the tech that the cars yeah. get so fast mm -hmm. then they have to pass new regulations to prevent them from yeah, all the time yes it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, they're basically fighter jets that stay on the ground. I mean, they're 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 pretty much like, and they might as well have like, uh, you you know, like jet engines in them. I'm oh. so sucked into this series now. I didn't think I was gonna like it. I'm like all into it. Oh right yeah, now. oh yeah. Look at that. So that, okay, the one on the top right. See yeah. see how it has a barcode and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So this is all pre right. So back when you can back here the you know the old marble. That's why I mean that's I have that image in my mind for Formula One. Uh -huh. like Formula One, I can just see the Ferrari, the Mario Andretti car, like them winning all the time and then after they get banned this is the direction they go over here to the right so i got my fan i have family members that they watch formula one like people here watch the super bowl it's oh, like yeah. oh yeah they'll wake up at 3 a.m to watch ferrari race or whatever and it's like a big deal well it's yeah. like a big source of national Italy, pride yeah i was gonna say <laughs> yeah they're always in there i just, one thing i don't understand i never could understand is how the drivers can make the decisions that they make and control like I remember, as a, one time as a kid, I watched the inside of a cockpit for a uh, one of those funny car dragsters. Mm -hmm. you know, they like six second quarter miles or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah, 
And I, I remember it's like a blur. He's just, yeah. How do you know what you're doing? Uh, you it so, doesn't make any sense. You, slow your heart uh, you know what right I now. brought up to Katrina, and I wonder if there's. I, I don't know if you can find this, Doug. I was trying to find this, so maybe you can. Uh, remember when we we interviewed uh, not uh, Alex, but the other guy, the rock climber. I yes. can't think of his name right now. Uh, yeah. But Cal- he, Caldwell. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and they and they said that they they both have had like those brain scans and they're 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 missing that that connection to the front or it's like whatever percentage. They just don't. They just don't feel. Oh, right. Yeah, they don't adrenaline feel adrenaline. Yeah, anything. they don't feel like fear. Right. They yeah. have to do something like almost death defying just to even get a little bit of an adrenaline mm-hmm. rush. Mm-hmm. I said, I wonder if anyone's ever done that same scan on these drivers because I would imagine. Of course, and yeah. when you hear they're interviewing them in this show, when you hear them talking to them, they're just like. Most of them are just—they know they're they're pushing the boundaries of, of everything that is death defying, and they're willing to die to win. Like so, right. I feel like they have that. It same reminds condition. me of when Justin mm-hmm. went in the what was the jet that is called the th- uh, Thunderbirds. What? Yes, yeah. it reminds me of that when he came back and told us about the G's and stuff. Yeah, and I'm like, how do they? How, how do they do even... handle this all the time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do they know like, what they're doing. Yeah, could you and imagine being under pressure? You're getting fired at, and you're doing this crazy shit in this yeah. jet, and your brain is coming out of your ear. How do you even it's know? It's a different kind of human. Yeah, for sure. It that was like my my little taste of what, you know, like crazy people actually do oh. all the time. And, it, it, and if you guys have ever, I, so I've like, uh, my uncle used to race go-karts when we were kids. And I was telling Katrina this, I was like, it just brought up all these memories. Because a lot of these guys, that's how these kids get into this. Uh-huh. They start them really early. Yeah. Like, you don't all of a sudden, like, at 30 years old, uh-huh. go like, I'm going to try driving a Formula One car. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've progressed as a kid. Yeah, you drive on a dirt track. You have like uh, the, the figure eights. Have you yeah. ever gone to those? Yeah, like so my uncle gold. used to do this, and so we he had this like like well as a kid I thought it was unbelievably fast. It probably went sixty miles an hour, mm-hmm. but sixty miles an hour, you know, when you're a quarter hovering of an, off the floor <laughs> on the ground, it feels like yeah, you're going two hundred miles an hour. So imagine those things push two hundred miles an hour. I can't uh-huh. imagine. And you, I'm sure you've all been in a very fast car. Mm-hmm. Being in a fast car that's sitting off the ground a foot to two feet is totally different feeling than than hovering on the ground. Dude, I was in years ago, I had a buddy who got, he had a Toyota Supra. Remember the twin turbo Supra from the, I yeah. think it was the nineties or whatever, yeah. or early two thousands. And he souped it up like crazy. And he's like, let's go for a ride. Mm-hmm. And that was the last time I ever got in a car with him. He yeah. 170 something miles an hour on the freeway we hit. Oh, wow. And that was terrifying. So, you know, De La Viega, like when I was, I think I was 15 or 14 or 15. And they have a, they have a Formula One car that has like a two seater. And they do like runs where they go on the they track. They put you in? Yeah. So I did that. My dad paid for it. And I, and I went on the, the track. And it was so freaky. Yeah. Cause they, well, I don't think they even turn it up like half of what, you know, the guys are racing, like at the speeds that they're doing. But when you go to approach a turn, you're just like, oh, my God, you think you're going to totally like flip and spin out and crash, And then all of a sudden it just grabs like it's on rails. And then he and then he accelerates through it, you know, and you're like, ah, it's I, I, it doesn't make sense. You but, got to but do one of those physics down. You got yeah. to do one of those. Yeah, I did that. Oh, like, no way. Yeah, a long time. Where? Where did you, where's that at? So, you, yeah, De La Vega. Where's it? No, where is that? It's uh, uh, what Monterey? Oh, out my my direction. Yeah, no yeah, kidding. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, so, that would be fun as uh, shit. Nah. <laughs> oh, it was, it was no, great. Nah. No, thank you. Huh? Cool. Really, yeah. dude? I get car sick if I <laughs> if true. I don't sit in the that's, front that, seat. That's true. That's if true. I sit in the back and you're driving the speed limit, I'm like, oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's true. That's true. You put me in one of those cars. It's gonna be. Bleh! Yeah, we used to go to car shows. There's there's like all these car shows there, and so like they had one of those as like the you know the feature of like something cool to do and like. Uh, yeah, I, we. My dad and I went to a lot of the drag races and and like at Sears Point and yeah. all that. So we were real into that kind of oh, stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, you guys want to hear some uh, hilarious? Um, I guess this is a hilarious promotion because people. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people. Our audience will get the irony of this. But Krispy Kreme, you guys know Krispy Kreme. <coughs> of course. By the way, you Ooh, guys yeah. like Krispy Kreme? I never understood the excitement you about know, that. You know, I I did. Like, everybody in Chicago went gaga for it. Like, it was – I, I remember telling the story. Like so, They're the worst donut, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, so they they actually throw a lot of it away because they just keep the fresh stuff. And so my friend knew this and, and like, would – we'd be driving on the freeway and it was, like, I don't know, it was, like, 2 in the morning or something. And he's like, we'll stop by here. And he would, like, haggle the guy to, like, no. get all the stuff that he's going to throw away. So he goes back. We go back to – college campus with literally a trash bag full of donuts. No way. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> like, dude, you're going to get diabetes. You know, he, he did not care. I, I was you guys never, were heroes, I bet. Oh, yeah. Everybody's like, yeah. And it's I'm like, a bag it's of like donuts. day old donuts. So, oh, that's yeah. great. So, yeah, anyway. I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm, never. Yeah. Never a fan. I never yeah. understood. I ate it once. I'm like, why is everybody excited yeah. about this? I like Winchell's or whatever. We so, had I, that was a Winchell's game. Yeah, oh, way yeah. better. Anyway, 
So Krispy Kreme came out with a promotion. If you show them that you got a vaccine for COVID, so if you go up with your vaccine card, you mm-hmm. can get a free donut every day. Health. For a year. Whoa. Yeah. And it's so, a great combo. Yeah, I know, that's the thing. <laughs> It's literally oh, it, one of the, the number one. That was the soda. Remember when I brought the soda thing when they were doing the whole the getting the test done and, and Pepsi was like sponsoring it and stuff like that. I was like, yeah. that's hilarious. See, this hey. is my problem. That's like one step, but it's, it's just like anything else. You know what? Like, people think that, oh, no, I got that. I'm good. It's back to the point. I, it's else. back to the point I brought up the other day with my client that I told you is just like you're, you're going the wrong direction, Adam, by trying to you know follow the fitness trend. Mm-hmm. Like where the money is at is the people that are getting obese. Yeah. And so the truth is, you know, that's smart marketing on Krispy Kreme. That's why our next promotion, we'll let everybody know right now, if you get a MAPS program, we'll send you a free donut. (laughs) Just kidding. kidding. I'm sure some people got excited right now. I mean, Planet Fitness did it. You know what I'm saying? They were were smart with the same thing, dude. Uh, Uh, They can't do it though right now. You guys know that, right? Because of COVID? Yeah. Planet Fitness now doesn't have any free pizza. I think their memberships dropped 20%. No, it did. You guys want to hear something else that's ridiculous? Yeah. So there was a call. I just read this story, and apparently this is happening all over California right now. This couple back in January of 2020 bought uh, a a brand new house in, I think it was Riverside, put half a million dollars down on this house. So it must be a massive, beautiful house. Buys the house. Everything closes. The, the 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 California passes the law that you can't evict anybody because of COVID or whatever. So the owner, the previous owner who collected their money, refused to leave the house. So for one year, they own this fucking house, and the guy who took their money is still there, and nobody can help them. What? They went to the police, the sheriff, and the sheriff's like, you know, if you were in Arizona, we'd be able to get him out, but yeah. there's nothing we could do. It's in California. <sighs> So I've the guy of, took I've their money. A, I've heard a bunch of horror stories dude, like this. And he's staying there. You got to get a guy. Yeah. Dude. Like un- under undercover. This is when sh- weird shit happens. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is when you like, you know. Dude, that, know. that is not going to stand. No. Could you imagine you give someone half a million dollars to buy his house? Yeah. He's like, I'm not going to leave. Make me leave. <laughs> Make me leave. Oh. I'm protected. Oh, that's my crazy. God. Yeah. That's when you, I don't know what you do. Tell yeah. your, tell your, tell my cousin Vito. Yeah, hey, exactly. You, yeah, <laughs> you yeah but then creative. you're in trouble even more. I know. Are then you, you get yeah. yeah. Then, then he gets to keep your money. You go to jail, yeah. and he yeah. gets the house. I know. Man, that's uh, you know. I'm just up, saying. You know? I know. You know. You're in. A, it, are you right-handed or left-handed? <laughs> Why are you yeah. wondering? Oh no, no. I just want to know real quick. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you're right or left-handed, <laughs> uh, do you like your thumbs? I can't believe that. Can you believe that? Dude. So I, apparently, it's happening all over the place. No, that's maddening. No, I've told you. I heard some stories of. So I have a Katrina's friend. Her her husband rents a couple properties, and they had somebody they couldn't evict like that. And uh, they finally got somebody out, and then they actually somebody else came in and squatted. So they finally they they went through this battle for a wow. while. Somebody else comes in, squats, goes out, furnishes the place, <laughs> and the cops show up, and they're like, "This is all my furniture. Wow. This is my house." Like, and they're like, "We," and then the cops tell them, "We can't do anything." Wow, yeah. yeah. That's it. So That's I have what a, the fuck? I have a, a family member who has a, a place in Tahoe, and the guy stopped paying rent. Couldn't get, couldn't kick the guy out, and not only did the guy not pay rent, but then he sold the furniture in there, which was my family member's furniture. Sold it all. Yeah. Now he says he got rid of it because the dog did something to it, or whatever. But anyway, they finally got him out. Took him a year and a half to get the guy out, and they go in there, and the place is trashed, and his furniture and appliances are gone. So he's like, "What do I do, dude?" Dude, no way. Uh, I, I would literally just like start living in there with them. And make their life a living hell. You know? I can't get rid of you either. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, exactly. You can't get rid of me. Try and get rid of me. I can just see Justin right now in like yeah. his robe with no underwear on, <laughs> drinking, drinking coffee in the morning like this. Oh, wake up just far just out fucking yeah. looking looking just, at him every morning. Take a shit in a pot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's where I'm going to the bathroom right now. Let's just be the most obnoxious human being <laughs> ever. Then it's just a game of attrition. It is. Let's see who could be the most yeah. annoying. Just stare at him. Oh, God. That sounds like a great uh, movie plot. By I, the way. I feel like that would be a right? movie plot. Did uh, you guys? I see that uh, Snapchat, big acquisition. They just uh, bought this company. I can't think of the name of it. Snapchat. No. Uh, mm. Anyways, I subscribe to that. I was I was reading. I you know I just I'm we're not on Snapchat. I don't. None of us are right. So I think it's the the demographic is 14 to 24, right? Mm. But it's still growing. They have 265 million visits really a, a day. 
I didn't even know it was still doing well. Oh, I thought they still, were gone. It is still rapidly growing. Oh, wow. And, and 265 million visits, the average person opens it up and checks it 30 times a day. Hmm. So they're, they they partnered with this company that does like analytics for like Patagonia and a bunch of these other big brands. And they're really making a big push on the, the advertising side. Hmm. So huge. I, I bought some of the stock this morning. That's the reason why I'm bringing it. So do you it. think a company will buy them? Like Instagram, like Facebook? They already said or? no. They, they, they were off. Offered, someone offered yeah. to buy them a while back. Okay, so so I'm going to sound like a, a fuddy-duddy, but uh, so Sna Snapchat, explain that to me. You go on there. You, you it's no different than Instagram's uh, uh, stories right now. So it's, it's and the Instagram stories was the uh, answer the to- the response to it. Yeah. So to, the whole site is But that. here's here's why it's- I thought it was you send a picture of someone and it disappears after they look at yeah, it. Yeah, it does yeah. that too. So does oh. Instagram has the same feature. Yeah, right. yeah. So they have the same feature. Instagram has all the same stuff basically, right? And the, they were the first one to do the filters. They were the first mm -hmm. one to do the disappearing stuff. Oh, right, right, right. But here's why it's of st still of great value and, and why I bought stock is they they own the 14 to 24 year olds. And it's not it's not a play today, it's a play for tomorrow. As long as they mm. stay there. Well, yeah. I mean, the idea is if you continue to evolve the app and if, and and provide value and okay, bring that audience along and with bring them. that audience along that you will be able to you got a, a 265 million people checking in on your your app every single day. That's a lot of eyes on you. See, I thought they all moved over to TikTok for some reason. I felt like that same demographic was like, "Okay, this is like where everybody's going to hang out now." Well, yeah. TikTok's a little bit different, right? TikTok gets more of the the dance dance people right the people oh. that are trying to do all the the, the funny uh, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. when i see listen to a bunch of old funny the, the ma macarena fucking, <laughs> like, honestly dude tell me it's not literally like the macarena social network Bro, like where you have like, when, when i see when i see 40 year olds yeah. on tiktok i know doing yeah. their thing yeah, the, the nurses just, hey, yeah, yeah yeah or they're like you know 40 year old <laughs> fitness person or health person <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Eat, you know, hey, carbs, protein, yeah. Yeah. fats. Yeah. You yeah. You know, this is what I'm like, dude, this for real? That's the we, most embarrassing hey, thing. You know, I, I feel so embarrassed. I blame yeah. Gary Vee for this. Gary Vee is so influential in our space, everybody's space right now. If he says something. Yes. If he goes, this is the next app. You know, you got yeah. enough of these 40, 50 year olds that are like, I need to do this. I see. I ask myself constantly, like, mm. would my kids be embarrassed by this? And if <laughs> yes. the answer is yes, then I probably. You have to use that as your benchmark. Yeah. And I don't always not do it, yeah. but usually I won't do it. Right. So if I think I'm going to dance in front of Instagram, like, would my kids be embarrassed? Oh, yeah, they'd be embarrassed. Yeah. I better well, not do well, that. Well, especially when it just doesn't, to me, it does, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big leap for me for, you know, okay, I, I let's say I did. Let's say I was, let's pretend for a minute that I was really good at dancing and singing <laughs> and I could do these things, right? <laughs> In a universe far, far away. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable land, right? So I, I let's say I'm really good and I get millions of people viewing me. The leap to selling the MAPS fitness programs just, just seems <laughs> massive yeah. for me. Yeah. So yeah. These how, people, how does that work? Yeah, so do these, you want big biceps? Right. Do you want nice ass? So these doctors and trainers that are doing it, it's just like you know and i don't i don't see that translating very well you know yeah. i just it and maybe I'm, I'm maybe i'm just too old to understand and there's some kids who's doing it for their own it. entertainment i mean i really don't see any other value lots of it. views and eyes doesn't necessarily mean uh, yeah well you know, and that's why, and so that's part of why i heard that why so many people are drawn to it is because it's easier to get more attention yeah like, but that doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything if it doesn't turn into well, no i agree with yeah. you I mean, I, in fact here. attention without I mean, my opinion i'm a surgeon i can do the worm yeah get, <laughs> getting lots of attention okay. without it converting to me is a nightmare you're famous for no reason now you're and i have to deal with the bullshit of that yeah but you're not making any money off of that yeah, yeah. speaking of social media i hate to say it but we predicted something uh a while ago what's that for the listeners who've been listening to the oh, podcast for a little while we called it so trump announced that or they said that he's going to create his own social media company yeah. i mean that's of course and, well, and, and I mean, we he called gets kicked that. off, you know, all, all platforms. What do you think he's getting? And do? not only that, but he's been saying fake news for such a long time. Right. It's just, he's essentially setting himself up for a guaranteed. I'm the least. I'm the least proud about this prediction. News. I'm, I'm the least proud of this. It prediction. seems obvious. Yeah. To me, yeah, it's very you know, it's not, like you said. He's it's been not calling that far a leap. fake news forever. That it's. I mean, it's ingrained. I mean, it's become people's lexicon now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, how many people even just joking around with friends are? Oh, that's fake news. Right. You yeah, know right. what I'm saying? Like he well, is. And just look at you know. I feel like he even ran for president just out of spite. 
you know, because like uh, like people told me couldn't do it. Well, we I mean, we talked off air about that, like way, way before he even became president and he was just running. A lot of us were like, dude, this is just he's a businessman. This is yeah. just a play to build a business after this. Totally. Like, I, there was no doubt in my mind that yeah, because you could pivot so many different ways. Anybody could. Right. If you become president, typically when people become president afterwards, they that's make when they make all their money, way more mm -hmm. money. Right. Speaking engagements or appearances or whatever. But a media company makes perfect sense. He's been saying fake news forever. Uh, he got kicked off all media platforms. He's got a huge base, right, of people that will want to follow him. And then he's got a huge amount of people that don't like him but can't keep their eyes off of him. Yeah. So his own media network is like it's that's a guaranteed win, you know. Yeah. So did you guys? I watched this documentary over the weekend. It was really fascinating. I'm not very familiar with the art world. I know, like, I don't know if you guys have ever been to auctions and like bought like yourself like an art piece or how that all works no, and everything. Never. Yeah, so uh, this I think this documentary is called Made You Look, but <coughs> I, I watched it. Yeah, it just went over. It was really fascinating, like how all of uh, these people got totally hoodwinked. They got totally scammed uh, by a few a few people that uh, I mean, I mean, you find out later, and this is kind of like spoiler alert, but uh, you know, this this Chinese guy was basically able to copy a lot of really famous artists uh, like Pollock and Rothko and uh, Motherwell, I think was the, the main three, but was able to literally copy their style and they'd find old canvases and then they, they, he would paint like what was supposed to be like a new undiscovered painting that they painted uh, that they found. They have this whole backstory for it and everything. So like- I it, was super fascinated by yeah. it. One, did you do you believe that she was in on it, the dealer? Yes. Oh, you do? I do. Oh, wow. I thought she was in Because dealers make a cut. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean- I, Dude, look at her still. She's still operating a business. I know. That's fascinating to me. Which she, I'm like, <clears throat> what? I was also really, you know, I was really fascinated also by that- in China, I guess this is this is a common practice. It's actually not like fraud and a bad mm -hmm. thing. Like there's like a lot of other artists that they actually they try to mimic somebody else. And right. the better you like are, like here here in here in America, it's more popular to like create something new and different. Yeah. Where there, it was like proving it. You are, you're a very skilled Which, artist. Is the ability to study all these different artists and actually I can see that as, as a form of flattery. But they were signing the back like they were the artist. Oh yeah, so, I'm not defending this yeah. motherfucker at all. No, he I'm was, just saying like yeah. that's that's a clear and definitive difference. Yeah, yeah. you know, it, it, that's that's you know intent to you know pass this off and get money. He got away with it too. He yeah. he flew back to he, he got his money. He was gone. Yeah. yeah. Well, he didn't he, he didn't get hardly any money at all. No, that's the fucked up part. Yeah, they were they the were totally up, extorting the, his the, talent. Yeah, the fuck, and that's where I don't feel bad that he got away with all of this because he's like this old 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 Chinese guy, and he was just like he loved painting. You could tell he was very talented. He was making a little bit of money, but he was not making these guys. That's the thing. They were it making, was real art. Like like people were just stunned at at these uh, you know paintings, and they were like willing to pay all his money for it. And so it, it had value. It just was that it was presented as these famous artists. Do you guys, did you guys remember years ago there was a, a woman who worked in a museum and she was restoring? Did you guys hear about this? She was restoring like an, a, a piece of artwork that was like valued. I don't know what, and she was cleaning it, and apparently she like. Accidentally wiped some of the face off of the painting. Oh my god! And then she and then she went to fix it. Have you guys seen this? No. Maybe Doug can find it. I didn't know it's this. It's the it's the worst restoration you've ever seen. In life. <laughs> it's like it's like a child drew a face on like a stick figure. Yes. Like you, you smear the Mona Lisa, then Dude, you come out there. Yeah. And it's like I a draw a little like squiggly <laughs> smile. I hope Doug could find this because and you can say women, I didn't. I did not know. This. I don't know. Maybe look up woman uh, messed up a classic painting with restoration or something like wow. that. Uh, it's the, it was it was hilarious. They, this one went this went on for what was it a decade or two? Yeah, so that was the interesting part too is like it you know, it would have been a real red flag if all of a sudden you get like 10, 20 new undiscovered art pieces all in the market at once. They dripped them in like one or two a year. So it was like relatively Oh shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Come on, man. <laughs> That's real, dude. Oh, bro. Average, you, do oh you show God. do you show up to work after that? Is that Jesus? <laughs> yeah. <dude. laughs> <laughs> what have you done? That's, that's gonna be. A, is that a joke, Doug? No, oh it's God. real. Amateur yeah. restoration botches Jesus painting in Spain. <laughs> Amateur. Oh man, Bro, that's that like looks like toddler. I did. Like you know, had a stab at. That it. looks like I did it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> 
That's the best thing ever. Bro, that is that is so classic. I'm so I'm so oh, glad you found that. Yeah, God. that was years ago, and then there were a bunch of memes that were that Dude, were crazy. <laughs> that's the worst thing I've ever seen. Hey, I mean, it's not even close. Yeah. You imagine you're, you're the museum like director. <laughs> you show up to work, like, hey, did you uh finish that? Oh, yeah, I, I it is so bad oh. that I feel like you could give me a blank canvas and I could get closer. Bro, look at this. <laughs> It looks like that, you know, you know, the gray one that all the, all the memes are about now. Like, it, I don't know. For like, yeah, it's, it's a classic paint. I know what you're talking like, about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like, no details in the face. A Adam, I wanted to ask you something. I hate, uh, sorry to, to take a left turn like that, but yeah. I know you were using uh, Organifi's Probiotic, the old one. Yeah, they what do you stopped think of the, making it. What do you think of the, of the, the, new, the balance? The I, new I've one? only tried it like one time here, and I haven't used it the same way that I used the other, the other probiotic. Is it the same? Is it... Or is it more it's better? It's better. It's much better. So this not only has the probiotic, but it's got the prebiotics in there. So it also provides you with the things that feed the bacteria that's in this right here. And it's in a packet. So you just pour it in your face, drink some water. Really? Yep. I'm so mad that it's so a guilty uh, uh, thing I did right here. So I got to admit it now. You're bringing up probiotic because I was actually looking for one in my pantry and I didn't have one. And I, you know, I'm out of the their original one. So mm -hmm. I used to love their original one. And it, I, what I've trained myself to do is that if I have something that I know that would compromise my gut, I right away go over and have a couple of those pills and it mm -hmm. totally mitigates how bad it is. Yeah. So <laughs> I had this late night craving and I, by the way, I justify it like this. So I, you know, I washed three cars. I, this I walked, weekend. I took 10,000 yes, steps. Yes, yeah. well, I washed three cars <laughs> this weekend. I lifted, I did all this stuff. So I'm like, I deserve some ice cream. It's been a while. <laughs> ice cream. It's like nine nine thirty at night. Nothing is open except for Baskin Robbins, and I'm like, I'm not a Baskin Robbins fan at all. And they had they have this thing called a a polar pie, and so I order it, and it's it's literally like a like a, a, a giant chocolate chip cookie what? with like cookie dough ice cream layered on top. <laughs> wait a of minute. It. Wait a minute. Yeah, Hold, on a Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on a second. How big was this? Thing? It's, it's like you wow. bought the whole thing? Well, you can't buy a slice. You got to buy the whole thing. I remember one time. <laughs> I don't remember where we went. Oh, I bought the whole mm. thing. No, hold on. I don't remember where we went, but we went somewhere and we were spent. We it was staying for Maps Anywhere when we were in Sacramento. There you go. We were going to stay for like three, four days creating a new program or whatever uh -huh. and filming some of it. And uh, we always go to the grocery store because we get Airbnb. So we buy food for the house or whatever. And everybody kind of divides up so we can get the food that we want or whatever. <laughs> and we're all in line waiting, waiting. Where's Adam? Where's Adam? I don't know. Where am going? And Adam comes around the corner and he's holding a full ice cream cake, oh my like God. a whole cake. Like I'm gonna crush this. And guys. I'm like, I don't. I, I, no. And I'm like, I don't want. I, I don't eat. I can't eat ice cream. I don't want to eat yeah. Adam. Be like yeah. the same for nobody else is mine. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, damn, bro. <laughs> You got yourself a whole yeah. ice cream cake. Yeah. Usually he tries to pull me in. You know, he's yeah, like, yeah. oh, here's the, here's the guy. That's gonna just, just, just as an easy target. Yeah, just get in on it. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I started setting him up with a question. Hey, when was the last time you had something like this? So tried this. Like, you know, Do you like that stuff? It's been a while. Oh, by the way, I grabbed some. Yeah. Yeah. He's like a gazelle. Yeah. 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 Wounded gazelle. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, I'll approach the Yeah, so I you're order, a lot of sense. I order this thing, and then Katrina comes down. She goes, what the fuck is in the freezer? It's called a polar pizza? Yeah, a polar pizza. What did I say? A polar pie, huh? Yeah. Or pizza, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's all right. So, it's, how bad well, was the diarrhea? I, you know, it was uh, not as bad as I thought, but my stomach was messed up. Uh, like, I mean, I definitely, I woke up this morning feeling bloated. I definitely didn't feel good going to bed, and I had a very small piece. I knew yeah. better. I was like, I can't crush this whole thing. I'm gonna have a little piece. Well, wow. Courtney made Ethan a, a bunch of uh, peanut butter cookies with like the Reese's um, cup, like inside it. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I had, I had a, quite a few of those. But it was funny because um, so it was his birthday this, this weekend, and so we were trying to like do stuff and had one of his friends over and whatnot and uh then we went to see his cousins yesterday and he gets these gifts and uh you know he he gets his gifts every time he's now they, they give him a, a card for Ro roblox and and so he gets so excited about this to to buy and basically upgrade his character i'm like this isn't even a real thing you know <laughs> i'm the asshole that got him like you know a basketball hoop and, and i'm all excited and, and you know he's not excited about it oh, <laughs> he's wow. more excited he's, about putting a new outfit on his stupid character they're not giving him real money they're giving roblox uh, money? roblox money oh, when was it i saw i watched uh last night i watched um i was just 
I just got these new speakers. I was telling you guys off air, and I wanted to watch like a, a good movie that was like newer. It had some good sound effects and shit. In it, and I so I, I just fell across Player One. I haven't watched that again. Oh, yeah. I, I really think that movie is. I love that. movie. They did a good job. They did a great. Yeah. You know, it only got like seventy something percent review. Like it's not like how that was I, a great movie. That movie, and I think it's accurate. As it, fuck. And they did it such is. a good job with that movie. It almost harks back to like uh, like go- the Goonies or that kind of adventure with friends and stuff. They did such a good job. Such with that. a good such yeah. a good job with it. But I mean that that the whole thing is about this idea. If you were, if were they said the whole beginning intros like how they got here. Yeah, it's twenty forty something or whatever like yeah. that, and like how it got there. How reality is no longer nobody wants to be in reality. It sucks. It's overpopulated. Well, it's that's dumpy. already happening. Yeah, it's, right. it, we were talking earlier like uh, about that painting that sold for how much money is an NFT or whatever it's called non fungible non fungible token. Uh, and so that would like I guess that would qualify as like a one of those like an NFT for Roblox money money within the game that's actually has so value. that's what an NFT is yeah I so guess. It's, it's backed by it's like a certificate uh, now it's 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 on blockchain blockchain so you can't it's very can't hard to copy it. or you can't replicate yeah, it yeah so that's so the, the thing okay so that art that you brought up that that was considered an NFT yes and what what makes it like because we were joking about someone would just screenshot it or copy yeah, it and they exactly. would have the art you can't do that because it's done on blockchain. I think chain? you can screenshot so, it. You so can confused. screenshot it, but, but you can't, yeah, I think you can, it de- degrades its quality not, somehow. And you can like, always prove that you have the original because of blockchain. Yeah, that's the thing. So if you did a screenshot and someone want to buy it off you, they'd be like, all right, show me the, the proof. And uh-huh. you don't have the blockchain or whatever. That's my understanding. Yeah, it's it's still confusing. But that was, I tried to like, you know, read up a little bit on it. And it was just like, okay, I guess. So it's just basically these digital assets uh, that you acquire. And they're, 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 you know, trying to figure out this is going to be like the next thing because we're all going to be in that virtual world or an augmented world or whatever. And so it's, it's like a whole new landscape for opportunity to like. Maybe I'll grab some. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. See, well, Own stuff. I don't know what the hell to grab though. Like, uh, what, what, what kind of. I don't know. It's all new. And it's, then how do you, and how do you know he's going to be whoever it is doing it is going to be like a, a like a the Picasso of NFTs like how do you know it's just not going to be like you just take a chance well I'm, I would imagine that current artists with a lot of value would go there first right so you're already making paintings and stuff that people want so then you create a one of those right. and then it's already got value maybe Doug can do some homework on this maybe we should throw a couple bucks at it. I feel like it's I mean if we all agree <clears throat> it's going this direction right none of us mm-hmm. believe I don't want I don't believe that uh, blockchain or Bitcoin's going away I've been saying that since well I don't know. India banned it. You guys see that? Oh, yeah. really? India banned Bitcoin, like like big yeah. time banned it. I mean, that's if if governments news. ban Bitcoin and, and other blockchain currencies, it will be relegated to the black market forever. But and it ain't going to be as valuable as it is now. Yeah. I, okay. I, I agree with that, but I mean, I still stand by what I said, which is it's it's open the the, the floodgates. Sure, for the, for it'll black, exist, yeah. but it ain't going to be valuable like it is now, unless mm. all money collapses. Well, but that's and, a lot of people. And then on. also, yeah. you have to. I mean, do we even know how big the the true black market is? We speculate on it all the time, but how, how does it compare to like the freaking GDP? I mean, is it freaking? Are we like? 10x, 100x. Well, you're counting the whole. You know, it's got to be smaller. It has to be. You think so? Yeah, of I course. don't think so. Really? Mm. Yeah. Well, well, black market includes a lot I of crazy shit too. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it's a lot of stuff on the black market. I would think that it rivals like I think it was would rival our entire economy. That's how big I think the black market is. Mm. And if it's that big, and it ends up and blockchain ends up only or Bitcoin only ends up supporting that side, it's is it still big enough? That even where it's valued ridiculous, there's a lot of people. So that, what are you, you know, buy drugs and so, guns, nukes. Like, what are you gonna do if <laughs> you just have Bitcoin? Well, people and are you're doing, on the black market. You can't buy anything in a real market, right? So, you, but okay. uh, what my 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 argument is that that market is as big or bigger. What's it? What are you putting up here? Uh, it puts the global black market at twenty percent of global GDP. Wow, one point six trillion. And here's wow. the thing: that's what we can that's what we can guesstimate, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. How that's much? True. How much shit? I mean, how how far off could that be? Yeah, that could be way off. I know that could be way off. It's dude. Definitely still risky. Well, like that whole Silk Road thing, like they shut that down, and then you know they <coughs> took basically like two billion worth yeah. of Bitcoin from them. I still think that the Bitcoin was invented by the CIA. I think they're watching everybody. <laughs> yeah, and they're just little by little they pluck people. I mean, it's yeah, that, let you get away with they? stuff for a while. You yeah, know? That's they're, they're gonna monitor. Nobody knows who created it. it. There's a, like a th- like a theory. A I story. thought there was a, there's like a theory of like twelve or fifteen people. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. such a mystery. It sounds very CIA to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sounds very 
So have, have you guys tried? I, I'm transitioning here. Uh, the um, uh, it's the waffle and maple oh, flavor. No, the, but you know what I, I cereal. You, you know what I did. By the way, I wouldn't have had the. And this is the one thing I've I've definitely learned about myself is that if I have Magic Spoon in my in my pantry, mm -hmm. I won't make that Baskin Robbins choice. Oh, so if, so uh, you wouldn't have got the pizza. <laughs> yeah, because what happens is that, you know I smoke a little weed. I'm watching a good new movie, or I'm listening. I'm all into. I'm into the, the, the where I'm at, right? Mm. And it's like you know what would be really feeling good? a little irritable or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, <laughs> you want some comfort? Yeah. 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 No, I'm actually in a very good mood. You know what I'm saying? I'm high. I'm watching a great movie. Everything's. I feel like I'm at a theater in my own house, right? I'm like, what I need right now is some treats and <laughs> magic some treats. treats and magic spoon. Normally, Bro, I wish. Yeah. Okay, I just picture that. Are you wearing like? Are you wearing like slippers? Like, what are you? What are you yeah. doing? Uh, I'm, I'm in baggy sweats and a t-shirt. I'm robe. comfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not just, in a dad robe. Just, yeah. 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 I gotta get one of those with I'm, your big old ice cream. I, yeah, my big ass bowl like this, right? So. No, so anyways, back to Justin's transition to our commercial here. I was I would normally eat the magic spoon because it, it gives me that that if I have like a craving sweet, I can say I can discipline myself to go, okay, Adam, you don't need a yeah. bowl of ice cream, you can have a bowl of that. And it, it satisfies me, but I was well, out. It helped me because the uh, the kids and um that were staying over for Ethan's birthday, like in the morning. Uh, you know, Courtney made him waffles and everything. I'm just like, ah, because I used to love waffles, dude. Waffles was my jam as a kid. Mm. Like my mom would make them. There was a very like she'd make them overnight, so it was like the the Belgian style. Really, anyways, oh, wow. really good. So all those smells, and so I I had a bowl of it, and it actually was, I mean, it was really good. Like I I, I didn't like the cookies and cream one quite as much, but the the maple waffle one, it did taste like uh, I don't know, like a honey crisp slash like maple. Maple, uh, mm. waffles. I'm so waiting for the first person to uh, screenshot like a you know a fried chicken with the cereal. You know, oh, so. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, chicken and waffles. Damn. Yeah, somebody will try. By the way, oh, those are so good. Great combination. Uh, I know it's weird. It's I a still, weird combination. I still, I still haven't done it. It's good. Everybody I did when I lived in Chicago. Good. We went, we went and, and did that one night. It was really good. You got to go to Roscoe's. Yeah, yeah. Hey, real quick, before we get to the questions, you're about to hear us answer some fitness questions. One of them is how to work through low back pain. In fact. We have a free guide that helps you deal with low back pain. You can find it at mindpumpfree.com. By the way, there's lots of other guides there as well. Head over there, download all of them or one of them, whatever you want. Read them. Great information. All right. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Culpepper Eric. Are there any benefits to following a squat everyday program? So do you guys remember when this became squat, popular, squat, the squat, squat, squat everyday squat, squat. program? We, yes, addre we actually addressed this exact question. On, well, it's been a while now. It's been a long time. Yeah. But do you guys remember when it became a thing on the internet? I do. It was a while ago, mm -hmm. and I remember when I first saw this. So here's the thing. I've changed my stance on it, by the oh, way. Oh, well, so so here's the thing. Back in the day, we were told in order to build muscle and build You're strength. You're allowed to do that, Adam. <laughs> yeah, <don't laughs> what's wrong with you? Way. Um, we were told, and it, this information was disseminated through bodybuilding magazines. We were told that training a muscle group every day was a bad idea. You got to train it. You got to beat it up, let it rest, recover so that it can grow. God forbid you work a muscle when it's sore or God forbid you do the same thing, you know, two or three days in a row. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. It's going to cause you, your body to, to eat away at muscle. Well, I remember at this point in my career, I started realizing that frequency was an amazing thing. If I adjusted intensity, if I could train body parts quite frequently and although intense workouts send a louder muscle building signal, low intense workouts also send a muscle building signal. Not as loud, but it still sends one. And if I do it right, I'll get a great central nervous system response, meaning my CNS gets my muscles to fire and to get strong, especially if it's the same movement. And it can actually facilitate recovery. So when I first saw this come out, I remember I was talking to one of the trainers that worked for me. And he's like, oh, this is so stupid. People are going to totally lose muscle. And I said... If they monitor, if they modify the intensity, people are going to see some of the fastest gains they've ever seen in their entire life with squats. And sure enough, lots of people did. Lots of people did see incredible results with this style of program. But you've got to monitor the intensity. You can't hammer yourself with squats every single day because that's a recipe for disaster. Well, I, yeah. I do think that there are there's a big percentage of people this is going to be phenomenal for. And then I think there's a, a big percentage of people this is a terrible idea for. If you don't know how to modify your intensity very well, uh, this is a very dangerous idea. Uh, it's it, and and you'll get little to no benefits from it if you approach every workout and with the idea that you're just going to you know squat and try and get as mm -hmm. strong as you can every single workout, lift as much as you can every single workout. I think it's a it's a terrible idea and a recipe for potentially getting injured. 
Now, if you understand that the idea is that you're just supposed to be practicing squatting mm -hmm. and that you're not supposed to be loading it like you're towards your max rep at all, um, I think it could be phenomenal. I mean, when was the last time? So, when was the last time somebody squatted thirty times in a year? Right. I would challenge. There's very few people that have squatted thirty times in an entire year. Mm -hmm. You got to be pretty consistent with your training and and lifting and squatting to do that. So, mm -hmm. doing thirty squat, uh, thirty days of squatting in a row, you're going to see some some gains if you back off the intensity. Well, and yeah, and and to to that point of of. Uh, not paying attention to your overall mechanics and sort of like squatting in spite of what your body signals are kind of telling you. Like oh, yeah. there's going to be people out there that are just going to see a message like that and program in squats every day. And they're just going to be like, it's just going to work its way out. Like, the, like things are just going to start working their way out. And uh, you know, I have a problem with that. I, I also too like to, you know, to change up the, instead of always being like the back loaded squat, like I've seen people like, so they'll do different variations of the squat. So they'll do like the Bulgarian squat or they'll do like, you know, goblet squats or they'll do like multiple versions of squats and not just keep it always, you know, the same type of a squat. And so I, I prefer, yeah. you know, if you're going to do it to do something like that, where you get different stimulus. Yeah. The, the first uh, people to really talk about frequency in this way in, in structured studies were the Soviets, right? The Soviets, trained their Olympic athletes who were so dominant in, in Olympic sports. It was incredible. They, they won everything. And they trained uh, th frequently throughout the day, let alone every day. But it was throughout the day. But what they did is exactly what Adam said, is they practiced. You're practicing the lift. You're practicing the lift. And when it comes to strength, because strength is a skill as much as it's your muscles growing and contracting harder, it's also a skill. So if you practice the same skill over and over again, you'll get better and better and better at it. Now, on the flip side of that, let's say when you squat, let's say normally you squat once a week. And every once in a while when you squat, you feel it a little bit in your hip, right? But it's not a big deal. You're okay. But you feel a little bit in your hip. If you squat every day, you're going to hurt your hip. Like that's that little bit you feel. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to amplify it times seven right. in a week. Right. You and have so, to adjust. Yeah, and you're going to hurt yourself. So you have to have a really good squat. You have to have a really, really good technique. You have to practice it. And you have to really mo modify your intensity. But I will say that frequency is still the biggest secret in uh, in fitness, it re especially in muscle building. It really is. You can train things very frequently. Your body adapts, and you get tremendous gains from this. And you look, I tell you, you you see this with blue collar workers. You know, people who, you know, uh, haul you know concrete or you know dig ditches or. You know, they're doing some stuff that if you went to go do, even if you're fit and you work on the gym, you'd be so sore the next day, your right. forearms, your shoulders. But these guys and girls, they feel nothing from doing it every single day. And they've got incredible capacity, work capacity in those corresponding muscle groups. You also see this with gymnasts. Gymnasts don't lift any weights, typically. They have mm -hmm. incredibly muscular bodies. They're, they're training their bodies every single day. It's not like they're doing, oh, pummel horse once a week. I can't practice more than that because my muscles are sore or whatever. Yeah. No, they do that shit all the time. Right. And they build tremendous bodies. People in prison, this is how they work out. And they get tremendous bodies. So it's, this is this is right. something that you can utilize, but if you're not smart about it, you're going to hurt yourself. Well, it's definitely, a, you know, it's a recipe for for gaining strength and getting stronger is, is you know, practicing and, and adding that in consistently uh, so that way your body recognizes you get better at it as an overall skill but but you still have to be conscious of the fact of repetitive stress like if you've been doing this for a really long period of time uh, you know inevitably your body's gonna start forming into these positions you're not expressing rotation you're not expressing side to side movement mm -hmm. this is all gonna add up as pain and you know potential injury down the road yeah in fact uh, I'm even thinking about experimenting with the routine myself where I train my whole body five days a week but I literally am going to do one exercise per body part anywhere between one to three sets per exercise and I'm gonna obviously listen to my body and train heavier on some days lighter on some days just to see what what's going to happen every time I've experienced I've experimented with frequency in that way I get the fastest uh, gains in the short period of time. I think you'll crush. The only thing that you'll have is the same challenge that the people that have that do this, which is the ability to back off. Yep. Because you will. There's going to be, I guarantee when you do that, you're going to have a day when you, the music hits right, you're feeling refreshed and good, and you're going to want to, oh, let's stack another plate on there, or oh, let's do a little more, let's do one more set. I think that's when you do, when you increase the frequency this high, where you're doing it every single day, or like what you're talking about five days in a week, 
the hardest part is the, the your the, the psychological piece. You're right. Because to give you an example of how much I would scale back, it, it would be like, uh, let's say for me, an intense set of squats is 10 reps with 315. So 315 pounds, 10 reps. Well, if I'm going to squat every day, I'm going to be around probably 225 uh, for 10 reps. So mm -hmm. much, much lighter, uh, still doing 10 reps. And then I may have a day in there where I put 315 on and do like four reps, right? So I'm never really going to that high level of intensity. Yeah, you're like undulating it. Oh, oh, right. And I'm missing it. But I'm always keeping the intensity very moderate mm -hmm. and fighting the urge. You're right. Because what will happen is you'll be like, oh my gosh. Feels so good. Oh my God, I'm getting really strong. I feel like I'm getting strong. You want to push it. Yeah. And then if you do, so you got to take some time off now. You can't train every day doing that. Next question is from Cameron Dart. When cutting or bulking, should your style of training change? This is a great question. I actually get asked this all the time. It depends on if your goal is short-term or if your goal is long-term. Long-term, regardless if you're cutting or bulking, your training, if we're talking about resistance training, should be focused on building muscle because building muscle obviously benefits bulking, but it also benefits cutting. One of the challenges with cutting is preserving muscle and maintaining metabolism that still remains fast. That's one of the hardest challenges, right? Is how do I lose body fat without losing this hard-earned muscle. Because if you lose 10 pounds, half of it's fat, half of it's muscle, you're just a smaller, skinnier version of your old self. Same fat, body fat percentage and everything. You've actually gone nowhere. You've just lost muscle. So whether you're building or cutting, long-term, the goal should always be to build uh, muscle. Now, if it's a short-term goal, if I say I got six weeks to get lean and I'm going to cut, what I'm going to do with my workout is I'm going to, because this is a short-term approach. It's not a long-term approach. But what I'm going to do with my workout is I'm going to change my workout to burn a lot of calories. So now I'm going to do supersets. I might do a couple giant sets or a circuit here or there, throw in some hit style training. Because in the short term, it burns more calories. I'll burn more body fat. Still doing resistance training to preserve muscle. But that's my short-term approach. Now, why is it not long-term? Because uh, if I do that long-term, then I still get those negative effects that I'll, I'll get from cutting, which is I'll end up losing well, muscle. Well, I think so... Because what, what would you do if you were already training like that and, and then you go into a bulk? Let's say, for example, you're following um, you know, MAPS Aesthetic and you're in phase three, which has got supersets and, and what you're talking about. And then you've, and you were bulking, right? You were, let's say you're bulking all the way through MAPS Aesthetic and then you've decided you're about to trans – after MAPS Aesthetic, you're going to transition into this cut and you just came out of all these supersets. Right. To me, whatever I, I and, and I, I, there's no like wrong answer. I here, see right? the direction you're going. Right. There's yeah. no there, and by, there is. There's no wrong answer to this. Like some people love being in a calorie surplus when they're training one to five reps, and some people love to be in a cut there because you preserve so much muscle. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's benefits to going both ways. Personally, whenever I adjust my food like drastically, we're deciding I'm going from a bulk to a cut. I also like to switch up how I'm training, whether that be the modality of it, like going from like a very and a basic maps anabolic to like a map strong type of a program or really manipulating the rep ranges like you just alluded to. I just find that it takes a lot of different stimulus, both nutritionally and uh, um, training wise to really see my body make big changes. So I love to kind of play with all of that, but there's nothing to say. I mean, you could follow, let's just say, a, you know, one of the maps programs because we do all the phasing and, and undulating in there for you. you. Just say you follow that along and you could be going into a, a cut bulk, cut bulk and at different phases and it doesn't matter. You know, that's a good, yeah. It's basically train in a way that's going to be appropriate for your body to build muscle, which can be supersets if mm -hmm. that's not what you're doing. Right. It could also be heavy weight and, you know, low reps if that's not what you're doing. Right. Now, speaking to what you're saying, Adam, personally, I like to cut and I, I like to go heavy and have longer rest periods when I cut because I don't have as much energy. Right. Supersets and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I like to be fed when I'm going to go and do a bunch of supers. Yeah. And I know that's counter to what a lot of well, people think. I agree to. with you on that. Uh, but at the same time, like it's, it's also an ego thing because you know, you're low calorie and now you're trying to do these same lists that yeah. you would normally have like a lot more strength when you're well fed. So you just have to like work through that psychologically. Uh, but I do prefer to try and like uh, do like, uh, you know, lower reps and, and go in that direction. That's why there's no wrong answer yeah. here. Uh, I mean, uh, so honestly, long as it's appropriate resistance because maps aesthetic really was designed to to kind of uh mimic how i got ready for a show and technically 
the last phase of Maps Aesthetic, I'm cutting. That's the last four weeks, mm -hmm. going, and that's where all the super set and crazy stuff is. So, mm -hmm. and, and the the cons, the idea for me is as I'm getting, you know, those last four to six weeks as I'm getting ready for a show, uh, not only am I restricting calories, but I'm also moving more in my workout to create an even larger deficit to really see right. a dramatic change. So, but your point is valid too. Like, you know, I totally agree with you. Like, it's nice uh, when you are fed to be doing a lot of supersetting and moving it around. Get and the pump. Yeah. So they, they, the the answer for I think for everybody is to to play with this is and this is what's so neat is that you know everybody listening right now there's going to be a, a group of people that go oh man I I need to be fed when I go in one to five rep range I just feel amazing and I see great response then great then do that you know what I'm saying that you can do either one I I think getting hung up on this because we do I get this a lot in my DMs this is actually mm -hmm. one of my Hey, I'll get a, a exact they DM. They want like the perfect formula. Like, right. Give it to me. I'll get a DM that says, you know, hey Adam, I'm in phase two of Maps performance. Yeah, should I cut or bulk? Yeah, should I cut or bulk? Or I'm about to transition into a bulk. Uh, what phase should I be in? It's like, uh, you know, that doesn't matter. You know, what I'm saying you should you should be going in and out of cutting cutting and bulking. We we I think we always talk about at least every four to six weeks. You shouldn't be staying in one of them too too much longer than that, anyways. So it's not always going to line up perfect for a phase in the workout, and mm. I think it's a good thing for everyone to try both ways: cutting in a in a in a, uh, a program that's strength based one time, and then cutting one time in a, a hypertrophy or superset type of phase. Next question is from Johnny Humber: Are artificial sweeteners as bad for you as sugar, and how do they affect blood sugar, sugar etc.? Ah, the big. This Ooh. one's always a debate, right? Always a big deal. I know Lane, Lane's head just exploded. Yeah, I know. Lane, Lane Norton and I have gone back and forth uh, over this uh, many, many times. Okay, so as far as blood sugar is concerned, artificial sweeteners don't seem to affect blood sugar. And there are some studies that show that it may affect the microbiome and how it responds to glucose and all that stuff. But those studies are not very good. So I think we can safely say with current research, uh, which there's a lot of it, that, that artificial sweeteners won't affect uh, blood sugar. Okay, so that being said, if uh, all things being equal, sugar versus artificial sweeteners, you're in a you're eating an appropriate amount of calories, you're, everything else is healthy, uh, doesn't make a big difference. Um, now, here's why I like sugar better than artificial sweeteners for most people. It's because of the behavioral effects that we can get from, that we can develop from using artificial sweeteners. So let me explain what I mean, Okay. When you eat something with sugar, if you're if you're if you're somebody that's working on your nutrition and you're becoming self-aware about the things you're eating and you're trying to you know eat in a healthier way, sugar has this natural uh, barrier uh, known as calories, right? So if I'm watching my calories and my macros and I'm trying to lose weight and I'm like I want to have that soda, I'm gonna look at the soda and be like, oh okay, it's got you know 200 calories, x amount of grams of sugar. I think I can only have one. When I drink things or eat things with artificial sweeteners, I've eliminated that barrier and it feels like uh, I can have as much as I want because there's zero calories. There's no risk. There's no problems whatsoever. I can drink 15 cans of this soda because it doesn't affect my macros or my calories at all. The problem with that is, yes, from a calorie standpoint, that's true. But from a behavioral standpoint, it's terrible because these things are very, very sweet they change how you're, still stuff stuff still happens in your body when you when you drink these things. You're still perceiving sweetness, so your palate changes. Other foods foods start to taste more bland. You start to develop this relationship of feeding whatever feeling you have, whether it's stress, anxiety, or whatever, with mm -hmm. this sweet flavor. And it's not a long term approach. And I'm going to say this right now: I've worked with clients for a long time. I've never had anybody lose weight long term successfully by having artificially sweetened uh, substances over sugar. It's never been a strategy I've seen to be successful. The only time I've seen it be a su successful strategy was with competitors. I was who, just gonna, that's where I was going to interrupt you and go because I do see value with it on that. And by the way, you were the one that got me to you know, stop drinking diet sodas and the artificial sweetener stuff and replace it with like sh drinks like that had sugar in it. Like uh, Hanson Root Beer, for example, was like my switch from Diet Coke. And, I, and exactly what happened is what you said is I knew that that drink had like 135 or 150 calories and X, I can't remember how many grams of sugar in it. And because I know it had that, it kept that at bay where mm -hmm. I would be like, oh, okay, I already had one today. That's all I get. 
where what I've always noticed about my behaviors with Diet Cokes is once I allow it into the diet, oh, I have one, you know, every other day, and then it's one a day, and then it's two a day. I'm going to get up to three, four in a day really, really quickly. If I'm not paying attention, I can do that because you justify it zero calorie and it promotes those behaviors. I do see, though, somebody who's competing uh, and who is weighing and measuring and tracking everything. That to me, that was something that I, I, I love to, that was like a treat. Like, mm-hmm. It was like, oh my God, I, I can't have any calories. I'm out of calories today, but boy, I'll go sip on a Diet Coke right now. And that will, it will give me that kind of sweet feeling and feel like I'm getting a treat. I used it like that a lot and I liked it for that. But for the average person who is not tracking, it just promotes the bad behaviors. Yep. And it ends up, you end up craving something else to go with that diet yeah. drink or that zero calorie food. Well, it's interesting because the, you know, the uh, artificial sweeteners tend to really ramp up that that sweet reward. So totally. it's, it's like even more powerfully sweet, which you know, throughout the day you're you're constantly thinking about where can I get my next sweet. Like it's it, it's something that your your body starts to really seek for for that same feeling. And so, uh, you, you behaviorally, uh, I'm a lot more drawn towards uh, providing that through. Maybe I'll have some cookies or maybe some things will sneak in my diet that previously wouldn't have otherwise. Well, so to that point, Justin, that was another thing that I noticed during when I was competing. So I've talked on the show before about, I did a show, one of a couple shows like this, where I did all whole foods and I did no, no artificial sweeteners, nothing like that. And then I did another show where I allowed like the quest bars and, and uh, diet drinks and stuff in there. And one of the things that I noticed about when I was eating whole foods versus the artificial sweeteners was the taste of fruit. And when I am when I'm allowing the diet cokes and the, all these drinks and, and quest bars, things that are all that utilize a lot of the artificial sweeteners, the taste of a strawberry or an apple is extremely bland. Mm-hmm. When I eat nothing but whole foods, now all of a sudden a strawberry, a yeah. grape, an apple Most tastes it tastes like candy. It yeah. tastes sweet. It tastes incredibly sweet. But when you're always pumping in those artificial sweeteners, then you go have natural sugar. And fruit, it ruins fruit. They're they're, they're sweeter than sugar. In fact, yeah. I gu- and look, I guarantee it's someone watching right now. Uh, if you have lots of uh, artificially sweetened sodas, let's say you have a lot of diet cokes, you probably find the taste of a regular coke to be bland. And this, I've I've talked to many people. No, I prefer the taste mm-hmm. of zero of Coke Zero because the sugar one doesn't taste as sweet to me. They're extremely sweet. There's still an effect in the body, changes how you perceive foods. And then look, let's look at the studies. The studies that are controlled, and what I mean by controlled is they put people in a lab and they give them everything measured out. So here's your food and that's it. What Does replacing sugar with artificial sweeteners uh, cause them to lose weight? Yes, their calories drop. But that never happens in real life. In real life, when they do studies on people living their lives, when people cut out sugar uh, and replace it with artificial sweeteners, they never lose weight. No, Almost no studies show people lose weight except for when su- when things are super controlled. Well, don't they actually show they eat 500 more calories? That's what happens. Yeah. They replace it with other calories because it causes those behaviors to happen. It is a terrible long-term approach to weight loss. I've never in my life have I had success. Have you guys ever had success with a client? Hey, replace all your sodas with yeah. artificial sweeteners. And no. It, it just doesn't, doesn't work. Happen. So so that's the thing about it. The, the promise with artificial sweeteners was – People are going to lose weight. They get to get the sweetness, and they're going to lose weight. It's never worked. It's never worked, and so that's the problem. So, yeah, if everything's measured and you're measuring everything and you're pre-contest, you already have dysfunctional eating anyway. Fine, go throw throw some artificial sweeteners. Well, in you fine. know, because we're talking about behavior stuff right now, right? right? So when you if you're if you're tracking, there there's your accountability, right? You know, you have the accountability. There's no mistake when you when you have those two diet cokes, like, and you're you weigh you measure everything out. You're like, oh, I can't have anything else. Eat versus the person who's like, oh, well, I, I had zero calorie drinks today, so I can go have this dessert. I can I should be okay, right? I can go ahead and have two three hundred calories here. They they're guessing. They're going based well, off how well, they feel. Well, sweet Sweetness or a change in flavor, it, it, it overcomes palate fatigue and allows you to eat more. So, uh, in fact, there's I've talked about this before. Um, what's that show called? Man versus Food. Yeah, the yeah. ice cream thing. Yeah, it was a huge. There was a contest where he had to eat a kitchen sink full of ice cream, and he got like I don't know how far seventy percent of the he way like there. Potato chips in between. Yeah, he started fr- French fries. French fries. Oh, French fries. He started gagging. He couldn't eat anymore. So how did he get himself to eat more ice cream? He ate a big plate. Yeah, he of, ordered. He ordered like three thousand calories of French fries. Yeah, super salty French fries, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and he had to eat more to eat more. And what that did is that made his palate fatigue 
he overcame it, was able to eat the ice cream. We all know this, right? You eat a big dinner, it's Thanksgiving, you're, oh my God, I'm so stuffed. I can't eat another bite of turkey, I'm going to throw up. Mm. Then they bring out something with a completely different flavor. Pumpkin pie. Yeah, I, know, I can eat more all of a sudden. So here you are drinking more sweet than sugar. Artificial sweeteners are far sweeter than sugar. You're drinking that while you're eating, you're going to eat more. This is what happens. It actually it, uh, it hijacks the body. What, is, what, is, more. what is that, Doug? Is it is it 10x? What is, what is it? Thousands. Is it? No. It's incredibly sweet in comparison. Yeah, how much, how, how much sweeter is artificial sweeteners than yeah, regular sugar? Just go sugar? aspartame to sugar. Yeah. You could just, you could just look that it's, up. I know it's high. Very high. And they put a tiny amount in there yeah. to try to make up for it, but it's still far sweeter. You know how you can always tell, too? Like So if you ever messed around with, I don't know if you guys ever did sugar in your coffee or not, but if you you do like oh, yeah. regular sugar. Yeah. You got to add way more. Oh yeah. And then versus like sweet and low, it only takes like one or two packets one and pack it sweetens your, yeah. And even then it's too much. Like, right. Ugh. It sweetens your coffee yeah. up like crazy. 200 times sweeter. Wow. Than sucrose. Yeah. Wow. wow that's so a lot. There you go. All right. Next question is from Ali A. Kelly. How do you address low back soreness after heavy deadlifts? Oh, okay. So if it's muscle soreness, uh, you, you know, I say it's, it's fair to assume that heavy deadlifts, you're going to experience an appropriate level because if you overdo it, right, you don't want to get too sore, but an appropriate amount of soreness in the muscles that support the spine, uh, the erector spinae muscles, which will be, it's low, it'll be the low back, it'll be up the middle of your back, and it'll feel like it's, muscle soreness. It's the abdominals of the low back. Yeah, so, that, so that's that's okay, and that's normal. If it's a bad kind of soreness, uh, if you're in pain, you can't move, you're, you're going too heavy and your form is, is not good, and I would work on... Hip mobility, ankle mobility is important too, but hip mobility seems to be more important for someone's deadlift and then their form. A lot of people when they deadlift it, they make the following mistake. They lift their hips and then they lift the bar. So mm -hmm. it looks like it's like a two-stage lift and it becomes like a Romanian deadlift with really heavy weight. Really a deadlift is both a pushing and pulling movement. Think people, We call it pulling, but the reality is, especially if you listen to some of the best deadlifters of all time, like Ed Cohn, for example, they talk about you grab the bar, you tense up and you're, yes, you are pulling with the upper body, but you're pushing with your legs. Like you're trying to push yeah. through the floor right. and it creates a, this, this much better technique that prevents you from overloading the low back. I think I'm looking for my, I'm asking my client uh, some questions on this, right? So I want to know how much they feel in their glutes and their hamstrings. If they, they only feel soreness in their low back, it's normally a form issue. It's normally something that we can we can address and we can like we can modify to your exact point. And it's normally exactly what you said. It's normally the hips are, are rising early and they're just doing like this big back extension more right. than they are doing a you know driving the hips forward. They're going into the lift with the they don't have the right intent, uh, you know, set up in their in their mechanics and, and really like feeling that. And I love that cue of like driving those feet yes. into the into the floor and, and that's what propels you up. Really like you're 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 trying to engage your back so everything's braced. So even like kind of pulling, uh, feeling like you're you're bending the bar yes. too to really engage, you know, your back and your lats and everything else uh, is great for that stabilization. But to stabilize and then drive with your legs, uh, you know, is where I like to get to that point. But you know, once you get a back soreness, uh, I mean, really to. To, to just like lightly go through, uh, I, I find that walking really helps too with that in, in terms of like trying to, uh, you know, get some active recovery going with that, like some light, like hip bridges and things like that, some hip mobility. Uh, but really, I mean, that's, if it's a really bad soreness, you know, that's something you really have to look into, like Adam said, your technique. Yeah. So, you know, uh, flat shoes or barefoot if your gym allows it, because any rise in the heel throws your center of gravity forward a little bit and will make it more challenging to have good form. So flat shoes. Um, get close to the bar. Justin gave a great cue. You want to, you want to, you want to turn on your lats. You want to pull down a little bit, bend the bar, and then take the slack off the bar. Meaning, create a little upward pressure. Don't lift the bar, but get it so that it's tight before you're ready to lift. Take a deep breath, hold your breath, and then drive through the floor with your legs and lift with your upper body, and you'll create a really, really tight position. You got to go through our our Mind Pump TV YouTube channel too, because we've got I mean we've got Jordan Shallow that did some great videos on there. We got few uh, experts. We got Jordan Syett that did some really good videos yes. on there. Um, who oh, we got Coach Eugene Tao that did some great. All gave a lot of different really cool tips on on deadlifting, uh, and and I believe. 
I believe Coach uh, Eugene Tao is the one that did uh, address the low back issue mm. as far as cueing and stuff. And, and I saw a lot of people that commented like, "Oh wow, this really helped me out." So cool. Check that out on the mind. That'll pump be TV. in the in the in the show notes at mindpumppodcast.com. Look, uh, Mind Pump is also on YouTube, so you can come watch the podcast if you like listening to it. You can also find all of us on social media. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. Me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam. And one more thing, if you go to mindpumpfree.com, you can check out and download a bunch of guides on fitness, and they're all totally free. Totally free. I do have this dream that at some point, modern medicine, when they recommend you go exercise, they say, we want you to go do resistance strength, which, by the way, can be performed with your body, can be performed with bands. Of course, you can use weights or machines. By the way, in the book, I put workouts in there as well. I actually put programs in there.